Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I, I want to clear something up for the record, uh, so I'll, I'll ask you, uh, Mr. Howley or, or Mr. Sign, whichever one of, can answer the question. My understanding is that for thousands of the parts that you make available for sale commercially, you are the sole source provider on most of them, and that there are no options besides you to be, for the military to be able to make those purchases. Um, that's, uh, I think, not true. Uh, during the qualification phase, there are many people involved in qualification and quoting on parts who all have the capability to make these. Uh, so there is competition out there. Uh, we, uh, because of the extremely small volumes, you end up taking it as a sole source, uh, but that's uh, simply the way that the business is awarded. Okay, that's not my understanding, and thankfully we have people here who can, uh, can testify to that. So, Mr. Fahey, um, the, the Transdime owns the rights for thousands of parts used to fix and maintain our military equipment. And my understanding is when DOD needs a mission-critical part, you are oftentimes forced to buy it at an inflated price from Transdime, who, as has been stated here today, may earn a profit of more than 4,000%. That's obviously not only an egregious swindling of taxpayer money, it also would appear to be a huge additional expense that is grossly irresponsible for the Department of Defense to have to bear. Do Transdime's inflated prices impact military readiness in your assessment by pulling funding that could be spent on other mission critical acquisitions? Absolutely. Could you, could you elaborate a little bit? I mean, every time you're paying, uh, you know, a, a cost that is outrageous, right, you could be spending that money somewhere else, right? So, for example, if we got our $16 million back, we could be buying other spare parts to increase readiness. As you know, if you go across the department, one of our major concerns is the readiness of our fleets. Uh, exactly. Uh, I, I'm pretty familiar with that, given my other job in Congress, which is chairing the Military Construction VA Appropriations Subcommittee. Uh, does DOD, Mr. Mr. Fahey, does DOD currently have unfunded acquisitions that could potentially have been funded if you weren't expending extra dollars to meet Transdime's inflated prices? Absolutely. Do, do you have any examples that, you, that come to mind? Uh, I don't have any examples that come to mind, but I know given the time of year as we're going through that process now to figure out, you know, what money we're going to ask for to have reprogrammed because there are, pro there are significant programs that need, uh, important programs that need funding. Price-wise, what would you say is the amount of unfunded acquisitions that are sitting on that list? I don't have that, ma'am, off the top. Is it in the... Hundreds of millions of dollars, it's, it's even the, billions? It's in the billions. It's in the billions of dollars. Okay. So I think it's safe to say that if we're spending 4,000, if we have a 4,000 percent unfair, egregious, outrageous profit, that uh, we are really affecting our military's readiness and our ability to make sure we can address mission critical projects. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, Mr. Stein. I'm sorry, Mr. Fahey, and, and can, or any of you who are, are there and, and can answer the question, is what Mr. Howley just said accurate? Are they, is there the kind of competition that, that they are suggesting? And or am I wrong that the military appears to only have them as an option in many cases when it comes to these purchases? Yeah, I'll give a chance. They are wrong, right? What he explained was accurate, that way back, like 10 years ago, when we were doing the development, there was probably competition of the part, but at this time, on most of those parts, they're sole source providers. And that would be because they bought up every single company that, uh, with, the, with the business, using the business model, as my colleague Ms. Hill entered into the record, specifically focused on sole source providers as their business model to acquire. Correct. And I would let Mr. Please. Fine add. So if I could, uh, of the 47 parts in our sample, we determined that uh, 39 were manufactured only by Transdyne. Okay. So, Mr. Howley, Mr. Stein, what you're saying is completely inaccurate, and I'll just remind you you're under oath. Today, there is not competition, apparently, in 39 parts. That there are other, there are other, excuse suppli me, if there you are other suppliers. Reclaiming my time. The way it works here is that we ask the questions and you answer them when we're ready for you to answer them. Okay? So there are 39 parts that Mr. Fine just mentioned that you are the only source for the military to be able to purchase. Is that, is that accurate? We are not the only one that could supply them. We're the only, they have 
apparently it's not it's not worth the cost or effort or time to qualify another source at this time. Okay. There are other people that could Reclaiming do it. Reclaiming my time, which I am now out of. In, in legislative speak, in a setting like this, we call that not fast passing the straight face test. It, what you just said doesn't pass the straight face test because it's tap dancing inaccurate and incongruent with the facts. So you are grossly robbing the American taxpayers and impacting our military readiness and our ability to make sure that we have, we, we have the ability to accomplish mission critical goals. You ought to be ashamed of yourself and you owe the taxpayers millions of dollars that I hope your company decides to make sure that you do on your own. I yield back.